Hello and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast, Vidcast, the Castcast. I am your host, Eric Tankar. So, what do I have the screen up for Drive Through RPG? Well, there's a Christmas in July sale going on. I don't have sponsors. I don't run ads. Uh, I don't make money off this, but I will leave a link in the uh, description box for this episode with a link to the uh, Christmas in July sale on drive through with my affiliate link. If you use it, I get a few coins. Appreciate it. It goes back to the community pretty much anyway, or back to projects. So, I got to thinking today, because I was listening to uh, Lewis Rossman. And if you haven't uh, listened to or watched Lewis Rossman, he's big on right to repair. Uh, he is uh, a New Yorker. <laughs> he certainly has a New York attitude. Um, and he was talking, reading an article about the Hamptons and how this rich escape or uh, a enclave for uh, the rich in New York City um, is suffering from lack of people to work with her historically, I guess, summer jobs because unemployment is paying too much. And, they, and you know what? It, it got me thinking. Right now, there are people in our community who, through no fault of their own, are not working and are collecting unemployment and enhanced unemployment benefits and are probably getting their, their, their toes into creative waters in the RPG industry, hobby, community, that they maybe wouldn't have been able to do prior. Now, at some point, these benefits are going to come to a close they're going to need to find employment. But, in the meantime, we've probably gained, and I don't have numbers for this, but we've probably gained a significant number of creators that we wouldn't have otherwise. And they'll probably retain many of these creators as they realize they can supplement their income going forward by creating. But what's going to happen in the in a post-pandemic world? Aside from the uh, the ceasing of the enhanced employment benefits, well, I think we've changed certain aspects of society. We've changed to a work-at-home environment for many office jobs. Your office now is your home. It's a home office. Uh, Rach has, as a social worker, has been doing her work from home with clients on the phone or in a video conference since late March of 2020. So we're talking damn close to a year and a half. People have been gaming. Many games moved to virtual from tabletop. And these games aren't all going to switch back to face-to-face -face at somebody's dining room table or kitchen table or living room or game store. They're going to stay virtual, even though people all live in the same general area. Because although virtual does not give the same experience by far, all right, it does give convenience. And we are a society today that is highly built on convenience. And just think about it. Maybe you had to drive 30 minutes to uh, get to your game before. When I used to play out in Long Island, my, my drive from the city, from Queens, out to Suffolk County, at rush hour, was usually at least 90 minutes. My drive home was about 40 so I was looking at over two hours of commuting time and two hours of burning fuel to play a game in person. 
Now, if that game had been forced to go virtually for the last year and a half, I don't know how quick people would have been to swap that around. We had somebody who was driving from New Jersey. God bless them. But, and, and we had, there was talk even at the time, like, ah, oh, we'd never want to bring this to be virtual. But if you were forced to go virtual, you might find benefits to it that you weren't expecting to. So these are things I think as a gaming community we have to think about. Conventions. Even conventions that are going to have physical meet, you know, meet, meet space conventions. North Texas, Game Hole, Gary Con, uh, I think even Gen Con. They're all also offering some kind of virtual convention, and not just for uh, our, our usual convention goers who can't cross the borders, right? Because of still in the midst of the, the COVID pandemic, but because some people can't afford to travel from outside the borders or across the country to go to these conventions. It's a lot more convenient to have a virtual aspect. Now, do I think a virtual convention can hold a candle to a physical convention? No. No. But if I lived in an area where it was two and a half, three mile drive to an airport, or um, I didn't have family members to watch my cat and dog when Rach and I went away to a convention in person, um, virtual conventions would certainly, certainly be a, a, a valuable option to have. And I think we're going to see, we're seeing this now, we're seeing VTTs that are kind of inching their way and, and Wizards of the Coast hinting that they're looking at a new VTT because as much as many of us, I, I, listen, I, I love my Dead Tree books, right? But I'll be the first to admit that I love having a PDF option or get a free PDF when I purchase something print on demand because I can read the PDF in bed and not keep Rachel awake with the light, right? I can read it on my tablet. My poor eyes, I can zoom in, right? I can pinch and zoom on my iPad. Things you can't do with a physical product. People are finding out that they can do things with VTTs that they could not do at a physical table. And again, you can play with people from across the world at the VTT. You can't do that in meat space, in, in a physical space. So I, I'd like to think that it's going to change. Definitely VTTs are going to come more to the forefront than they ever have. We've seen the numbers with the World 20s usage and uh, Fancy Grounds usage. These are the companies that give their public numbers. And we can see a huge increase in uses due to the pandemic. Now, we're going to see a rollback to some extent, I am sure. But I don't think we're going to see a rollback that's going to come anywhere close to the numbers that they were at before. I think they're going to retain 50, maybe even 70, 75% of the increase in usage that they picked up because of the pandemic. Now, I know there's, there's going to be naysayers like, ah, oh, VTT's not for me. They don't have to be for you. They don't have to be for anybody that you know or game with. The fact is going to be that people have gotten used to playing with VTTs, and it's now an option. My wife used to insist that she could never take classes online or work from home and now she doesn't want to go back to working in an office and she's been taking yoga certification classes to be an instructor via zoom and is like this is awesome this is great so we're going to see a huge shift a seismic shift it does not mean that people are going to stop playing at game stores it does not mean that people are going to stop playing rpgs in their living room but it means that some people will stop playing in these locations. And I wonder what that's going to mean for store business. I mean, we're going to find out, I guess, next Saturday, uh, Joe the Lawyer, 
Rach, uh, Professor Learning Master, maybe Joe's brother. Um, we're going to go down and meet up at a police strategist this coming Saturday. At my first time in a physical game store, probably since 2019. And it's going to be interesting. And I want to see what the shelves look like. And I want to see what is selling. Sometimes the best way to know what is selling is to see what is being sold. What is front and forward? What is being put in the places where historically have always been where the big selling games are? And it's going to be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Folks, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And uh, by the way, if, if, if you're looking to troll me about other topics... I'm just, I'm just going to delete those comments. person knows who I'm talking to, but in the future, it just isn't going to be there. If you want to talk about this, the future of VTTs and gaming in general, this post-pandemic world that we're going to be entering, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave a voicemail at 347-509-5168 or email 10cars.tavern at gmail.com. And again, for the uh, Christmas in July, um, I am going to be putting up a link in the show notes. You can click on the link, and if you buy anything, uh, you know, I'll get a few points. Uh, something, I'm trying to click on the wrong page here. Uh, under $5, uh, look at that. Torchlight comes in at number six still, holding its ground, and... Hottest small press. Torchlight is number five. So I really thank the community for the support they've shown uh, and the support you've been showing the creators. Okay. Uh, the money that I'm making with this is going back into other projects. I'm happy to be paying uh, cover, cover art, um, authors, editing. Starting with issue two will be... Uh, painting uh, Jeff Jones for his layout. I really owe him more than can be stated. His layout's been awesome. And I've been getting some peeks at some uh, uh, layout in progress for Swords and Wizardry Continual Light Digest Edition, which should be coming out early fall. So, things to look forward to. Alright, folks. Oh, the kitty's coming up on the desk. Um, as always, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice. Knock on wood. Remember, if we're still in the midst of the world of the pandemic, I only ask that you use your common sense and take precautions to keep yourself, your family, your friends, your loved ones healthy and safe. And I swapped back to my old microphone to see if it cuts back on the uh, sound of the AC. I like the new uh, microphone, but not when there's background noise. So we'll see how well this one came out. <sighs> Work in progress. All right, folks. On that note, laters.